for Sports Director Scott Eisberg. An investigation is underway. Good evening, I'm Scott Eisberg. Sports 4 has learned the College of Charleston is investigating the head coach of the Cougars basketball program, Doug Wojcik. Sources close to the program tell us the school has used investigators to look into allegations of verbal abuse by the head coach. Sports 4 reached out to Wojcik, but as of airtime, we have not heard back from him. We also contacted athletics director Joe Hull. He told us he has no comment on any questions we posed about an investigation or any questions relating to Wojcik. We're told the investigation concerned the day-to-day -day treatment of players as well as specific instances between Wojcik and players. We're told the players met with school officials this week and no resolution was reached. A spokesperson for the athletics department reiterated just before airtime the department has no comment on the allegations. More on abcnews4.com as the story develops. The United States run through the World Cup has been nothing short of breathtaking, squeaking into the knockout round with a country rallying behind them today. The and now, ABC News 4 Sports Director Scott Eisberg. No word from the college. Good evening, I'm Scott Eisberg. Still a big cloud of silence hanging over the investigation into accusations of verbal abuse against Cougars head coach Doug Wojcik. Several sources tell us powers that be at the college, including new president Glenn McConnell, still mulling over Wojcik's future on George Street. The college still hasn't acknowledged anything going on with the basketball program. No comment from the athletics department or AD Joe Hall. No comment from the Wojcik camp either. Our sources tell us this. The college has been investigating investigating Wojcik for months. Investigators presented a 100-page report detailing the allegations of verbal abuse from Wojcik. I'm told the allegations against Wojcik are all verbal, not physical. They don't involve anything racist or homophobic, but are profanity-laced attacks on the players themselves and their families. Sources tell me the players on the team have met several times with powers at the college and voiced their concerns. Staff and players, current and past, under Wojcik, have talked to investigators. Sources say the decision on the findings in Wojcik's future at CFC are now in the hands of new president Glenn McConnell, who did not return a message left for him. We spoke to several former players under Wojcik who were interviewed. They asked not to be identified, but did have some interesting comments about him. One former player says, quote, just tirades, berating people, just getting personal like things about people's families, stuff about you personally that has nothing to do with basketball. The very first time I ever met him, he was already saying blank to me. He's insane. He's just so ridiculous and it's all the time and he's so manipulative and he's insecure about everything. No one can take it anymore. I don't blame them for wanting to walk out. End quote. Another former player in an email says to me, quote, I just feel as if this whole investigation is long overdue. Wojcik is very abusive verbally, and that's understandable considering he is a tough coach. The issue is that he attacks players on a personal level. And he went on to say he should not represent the college in any fashion. Going from a laid-back Bobby Kremens to Wojcik was a major adjustment for sure. However, we all tried to buy in to what he wanted to do. End quote. As far as Wojcik is concerned, he's got three years left on his contract, making 400 grand a year. So if the college does decide to fire him without finding a breach in his contract, they'd owe him $1.2 million. Wojcik is a military guy. He graduated from the Naval Academy, served the country before getting into coaching. He does have a vastly different coaching style than Bobby Kremens, who recruited many of the current Cougars. Well, a big time move for a longtime Citadel guy today. Citadel grad and 12 years. Citadel assistant coach Chris Lamonis has long been regarded as a top assistant in college baseball under his old buddy Citadel, old Citadel buddy Dan McDonald. Now he's got his own program. Lamonis is hired today as the new head coach at Indiana. A head coaching gig in the Big Ten is his first gig. Not bad for Lamonis. The Citadel legend aided Louisville to three College World Series appearances, including back-to-back 50-win -back seasons in 2013 and 14. As a coach at the Citadel, he helped lead the Bulldogs to five NCAA tournaments. Braves and Mets tonight down in Atlanta. The Braves strike early in this one first inning. Chris Johnson with the shot down the left field line with the bases juiced. That scores B.J. Upton, Andrelton Simmons, and Freddie Freeman. Braves up 3-0 on the Mets. Julio Tehran does the rest from there. Goes seven, only gives up four hits. That's all the offense the Braves needed. Braves win 3-1. Seven straight wins for the Bravos. River Dogs going through an absolutely brutal skit. Just swept in Kannapolis. Went to Savannah. Lost last night. And guess what? They lose again tonight. Savannah beats the River Dogs 7-4. Dogs look like they're just waiting to break out 
on Channel 4 night Saturday. How about former College of Charleston standout and Somerville resident Brett Gardner? The guy is a speedy leadoff hitter. These days, he's a power hitter. Sort of. After an RBI triple on Monday, Gardner goes yard today to start things off for the Yankees. It's his eighth home run of the year. Not bad for Gardner before the All-Star break. Gardner also with an RBI single today. Yankees, however, lose to Tampa Bay 6-3. Porter Gowd's K.J. James signs with High Point today, decommitting from Abilene Christian. All right, Scott. 425 on ESPN Radio. And now, ABC News 4 Sports Director, Scott Eisberg. The Chuck Drizell era over at the Citadel. Good evening, I'm Scott Eisberg, a guy who came in with pretty lofty expectations, of course, living up to his famous basketball name. The son of Lefty Drizell also followed the very successful Ed Conroy. No off-the-court issues, no academic issues, just a win-loss issue that eventually cost Chuck Drizell his job today after five seasons on Moultrie Street. Athletics Director Jim Center would not comment on camera today, but did issue this statement through the Citadel. Quote, this was a difficult decision, but in the end, our one-loss record was not where we believed it should be. At its center, we will begin our search immediately to find a coach who is the right fit and will support our mission of educating and developing principled leaders while directing the Citadel basketball program to a more competitive level, end quote. As for Drizell, we did catch up with him today on his five-year tenure at South Carolina's Military College. Not unexpected, still not easy for Chuck Drizell. Yeah, it's hard because, you know, you... you um it's it's um it's like in, you know it's not ending a relationship but it's certainly changing it the thing about this coach this man he's not one for excuses as losses mounted confidence dipped never throwing in the towel even today not throwing his team now his former school under the bus you know they're in good hands they're at a great place they're going to do great things they're fine young men they worked so hard for me uh while i was here i've never had a complaint with guys not working hard they're wonderful and so for that, I, I value the experience that I had here for the last five years. Some bounces didn't go his way. From year one, losing a top returning player in Harrison DuPont to this year, losing his top returning player, Matt Van Soyk, to an honor violation. Regrettable circumstances, but when asked about regrets... I, I've, oft, I've thought about that since, uh, since this morning, and um, no, I've done everything I can. I, like I said, I... I put my heart and soul into it. And so when you do something like that and it just doesn't turn out the way you want it, we just didn't win enough games. So Chuck Trezell moves on after five seasons, not searching for a break, but another job. No, my passion is coaching and working with young men and helping them develop and building a program. I love game days. I'm going to look for a great opportunity out there for me and my family. And um, I'm going to keep working hard and, and, and stay in this business as long as I can. Leaving it with a bit of advice from the men who gave him that name. He just, he said, keep working hard. You know, he's always told me the harder you work, the luckier you get. And, and uh, he said, there's an opportunity out there for you that, that will give you a chance to, to win and, and be successful and it can affect the, the kids' lives that you come across. And you just got to keep working hard. That's what he said. Keep working hard, Chuck. You're doing fine. As for the program left behind, no interim coach will be named at the Citadel. No timetable has been announced for Drizell's replacement at the Citadel. High School Hoops Saturday, the Burke boys, one of two teams from the low country to bring home a state title. Deion Richardson at the helm helping lead the Bulldogs to their first state championship in more than three decades, replacing the legendary Earl Brown and missing the state playoffs just a few seasons ago to where the Bulldogs ended up this time around, a long, special journey. Well, well, when I came in, it was, it was hard. Um, a lot of people doubted me, doubted that I knew what I was doing. Um, like I said, it took us some time. It took us some time to get together. These guys are seasoned. They're ready. They were there. We prepared for it. And um, I'm happy for them. To baseball, Taylor Clark named the Louisville Slugger National Player of the Week. That after a complete game win over Radford, where he struck out 18 batters, a new CFC record. Head coach Monty Lee calling it one of the most dominating performances he's ever seen. Clark struck out the side three times. The redshirt junior righty now 3-0 on the season with an ERA of 1.0. Six, seven. Wofford and Furman play tonight for the Southern Conference title, so another team from the Palmetto State will punch their ticket to the big dance. All right. Charleston High School Band. Great job. Yeah. 
Good evening. I'm Scott Eisberg alongside Darren Stoltz. It's a packed night of action, so let's get right to our game of the week. West Ashley and Wando, a solid rivalry, but two teams going in different directions of late. The Wildcats 2-4, and four, and they fell off after a fast start, but the Warriors coming off a big win over Bluffton. They're 4-2 and two entering tonight. Absolutely. West of the Ashley, we go for this one. There is Wando head coach Jimmy Noonan, but West Ashley strikes first in this one. End of the first half. How about the 5-1 and one start for New James? James Island head coach Ike Allred. Better than anyone could expect tonight, Allred is truly welcome to 4A football in a big way. The Trojans open up their first 4A region play game against state title contenders Goose Creek. To Fulmer Field and Goose Creek we go, and I don't think Ike Allred could have written up a better start to this ball game. Dominique Jefferson reaches back to pass but loses the ball. Picked up by James Island's Tyler Green, and are you kidding me? Green takes off 80 yards to the house for the touchdown. James Island goes up 7-0 on Goose Creek, but the Gators come back with a vengeance. Je that is awesome. The academic magnet, Dirty Birds Band. Good evening and welcome to Friday Football Frenzy. Of course, the spotlight is on academic magnet tonight after a week of controversy. They play Battery Creek tonight with Bud Walpole on the sidelines. And Darren Stoltzfus, you were there. I think there was excitement and anger in those drums. No, Scotty, it's been a week of turmoil for this football team. Heck of a band here yes, in our studio. All right, to our game of the night. The Battle of Brotherly Love. New Stratford head coach Joe Marion taking on his older brother Bobby, the head coach of West Ashley. They coached with and against each other for years as assistants, their only time as head coaches back in 1986 at two now defunct private schools. Bobby won that battle. To Ray Stackley Field we go for this one. There are the two brothers, the handshakes as opposing head coaches. Special moment for these two guys before this ball game. First play of the game, it's Stratford quarterback Jamison Mobs throwing to KJ Givens for a 67-yard touchdown pass. How about that for a way to start the ball game? Then more Stratford. Mobs this time goes to the ground, hands off to Xavier Young, and he takes off 43 yards for the TD. 14 nothing. Stratford. West Ashley gets going on defense. Mobs passes tip. Picked off by the Wildcats. Malik Brown makes that one a pick six. Wildcats on the board. 14-7 Stratford. West Ashley quarterback Justin Berry pitches it then to Malik Thompson. Takes it in for the TD. 